Okay, sorry for the poor audio quality, I just wanted to record something really really quick to show you a problem I had and sort of how I solved it. So I kept having this blue screen problem again and again and again with the kernel security check failure and it seemed to happen more and more frequent and it was literally driving me insane because I can't work. And I finally figured out what the problem was and as you can see here I'm recording my screen so it's a bit weird but I'm actually just trying to disable and then uninstall the VirtualBox network driver and just give this a couple of seconds and you're gonna see what's gonna happen. So I tried to uninstall it and it sort of starts and then the computer blue screens. Whoops daisy that wasn't fun. And that actually happens uh, also when I try to uninstall VirtualBox regardless of whether or not uh, I've tried to disable the drivers uh, beforehand. So I went ahead and I looked at the dump file created when my laptop blue screens. You have several log files or dump files created when your computer blue screens and you can take a look at those using uh, Windows Debugger. And I'm not going to go into how you use it, but if you can see anything on the screen, because I'm not sure how the screen resolution is, um, you're going to see that the problem seems to be related to my network uh, drivers, which I kind of had suspected before because I'd taken a look at several dump files. Um, but this time I was quite confident that was uh, the problem and uh, yes, this is the result. I, I'll probably post this on, uh, on my blog and I'll write up a blog post with all the details how to go about uh, trying to sort this out. So out of curiosity I, I was thinking well I can't possibly be the only one having these problems and at this point I had no idea uh, which of the network drivers was causing this problem or why. So I decided, well, I'll just go ahead and I'll just give this uh, a little Google or Bing. And it turns out I wasn't the only one having this problem. Uh, it turns out that VirtualBox seems to have a problem with network drivers. And that's why I didn't want to install it in the first place, but work um, forced me. So anyway, so I decided on trying to do a few things and I found several issues that had been reported. Um, turns out nobody has really replied and it's been over a year. So, I mean, the likelihood of finding a patch of some sort that would help me out was considered zero at the time of Googling. So I decided on basically, I just want to get rid of this because I'm not using VirtualBox anymore. I've converted the virtual machine file to one I can use in Hyper-V instead and VMware is also playing along nicely. So what I went ahead and did is I went and took a look at the properties for my network uh, drivers and uh, copied them and did a search, making sure that I downloaded them. Because what we're going to do or what I decided to do was to uninstall them and I just want to make sure that I actually have them so I can install them again afterwards in case uh, something just doesn't work quite right. So I did that for both of them, both for the wireless and the Ethernet one. I'm not quite sure if you actually need to do that for both but definitely for the wireless one that was the, the one that was uh, incompatible with VirtualBox or rather VirtualBox was incompatible uh, with that one. So anyways, after I uninstalled, uh, after I downloaded them, I could go ahead and just uninstall them. I decided not to remove the software on the computer um, because it kind of neat if I can just, you know, keep it there and I can, uh, yeah, have less trouble uh, reinstalling them, I guess. So I did that with both of them, as you can see I'm doing here. And I'm obviously chopping away all the time it takes to, you know, watch things uh, uninstall because that's kind of boring to take a look at. Well, with that done, here comes the, the big moment of truth. So, um, what I decided to do next is to go ahead and just get up the control panel, getting ready to uninstall the program. But first, I'm going to go ahead and try to disable the VirtualBox driver, and that's going to work fine because I did that before. But uninstalling gave me a blue screen every single time. Let's see if that works now. And I decided to remove the software as well on this one. And look at that, actually it didn't blue screen. So I'm quite hopeful I will be able to uninstall VirtualBox without a blue screen. 
And I actually also tried downloading VirtualBox and running the installer and choosing remove VirtualBox instead of uh, install, but that didn't help uh, either. If you get a blue screen every time you start your laptop, then go ahead and start it in safe mode and disable the network drivers and then uh, boot up normal and then uninstall them and continue. So with that done, I'm going to go ahead and uh, run the installer for the uh, uh, for the first driver that I removed and uh, obviously it's going to go ahead and actually find something already there because I kept uh, the software after I uninstalled it but uh, I'm going to choose to do a repair and if repair doesn't work you know just go ahead and just run it as normal and once that is done is the moment of truth again has this worked so I'm just going to give it a little bit of time to make sure everything installs correctly. I already know at this point that I have a lot of other things to fix. This is not it. So uh, once it has finished, I go back to uh, Device Manager. And I can see I have problems with two things here. Uh, I have problems of, obviously with Hyper-V. So the network switch seems to have an issue here. And if I try to just go ahead and update the driver, it's just going to tell me everything's okay. But obviously not everything is okay because, as you can see, there is a problem with it. Which can be confirmed by simply going to Hyper-V. So inside Hyper-V here, uh, I currently don't have a lot of virtual machines to test on because I usually have them in a, on an external drive. But I know I will have to go into the virtual switch manager to probably do a few configurations. But the first thing I'm going to try is to go ahead and disable uh, the Hyper-V feature. And I'm going to do that, which means I will need to restart my laptop. And I'll have to do this a couple of times. So the plan is here, I'll simply turn off the Hyper-V feature and then I'll go ahead and, well, yeah, I'm going to remove, um, uh, first of all, disable the, the drives and I'll do that for both of them. And then I'm also going to go ahead and attempt to uninstall them, but I don't really get the impression that uh, I succeeded in doing that because um, they're still there. But anyways, I'll just go through the motions and I'll restart my laptop and then enable Hyper-V feature again and then restart the laptop again. So after I've done that, I can't see any errors um, on the network adapters, so that's good. But I do know that I will have one problem with one of my virtual machines, which is the Windows Phone emulator. So if I go ahead and try to start it, it's going to tell me it can't find the virtual switch. Uh, it can't, uh, obviously, but I can go ahead and add it myself again if I want to. Now this is where something a little bit strange is going to happen. So watch me here as I create a virtual switch. I make sure that it is internal and I'll just create virtual switch and I'll give the, it the exact same name as it had before because, you know, in case Visual Studio sends off or use some sort of config file together with the shell application that or the shell that runs the virtual machine, you know, if there's a problem there, you know. And I seem to be having a couple of problems, but I'm just going to ignore that for now. I'll just click close and I'm just going to click OK. And then I'm just going to open up the virtual switch manager again. And uh, if you can't see it there, just go ahead and recreate it again and it will actually work this time around. It's really strange, but obviously the virtual machine is not currently using the switch. So I need to go to my virtual machine settings and I need to go ahead and just make sure that I set it to that virtual switch which is there in the list and I'll click OK and apply and obviously I'll have to recreate the virtual switches for my other virtual machines as well. And now it should be running fine and if it runs in Hyper-V it's going to run in Visual, from Visual Studio as well. So everything should be completely fine. And there we go, as you can see it's up and running and I think everything is sorted now. Um, hopefully you haven't had these exact problems. If you have, please share your solution, your thinking on Survitum. And thank you so much. Take care. Bye.